Uh, hey guys. Um, so first question is, how many of you have been asked to do this? Uh, for those of you who don't know, read the effing manual, which uh, is usually about a dozen pages of stuff you don't really want to read. Uh, now, how many of you have also been told that good code doesn't need comments? Yeah. And how many of you have found yourself doing this again because the code you're looking at doesn't really have good comments or comments at all and you're completely lost? So uh, two things we know about comments are, one, they're ignored by the browser, and two, they're stripped out during minification. So have you ever traveled to a new country without a map? Uh, maybe without even knowing the main speaking language of that country. So kind of delving into a new code base, you might not have any idea what the language is like or it's completely new to you. So. Uh, that's why even though comments are not really read by machines, they're meant for us to read. Um, this is an example of some comments that I wrote about two years ago in a file. I thought I was being really clever and creative with them. Um, just imagine that there's some code between the comments. Um, and it wasn't until I was, uh, someone asked me, a back-end developer in fact, uh, asked me, hey Georgie, where's the red button? And um, I was standing behind him, physically pointing at his screen, going, yeah, there it is. And I felt really stupid because my clever comments weren't really very clever at all because he didn't understand them. Uh, so if you'd known that this file was called buttons, that might have given you some idea. But the comments inside the file didn't really give anything away. So why are comments important? Well, they can help maintain consistency. So uh, if you've gone about building something a certain way and you've written comments to describe what's going on and other people in your team have a look at that, they can build things in a similar fashion. They also help, they also facilitate understanding. So um, sometimes you might uh, write out some comments uh, to explain the logic of what you're building and even though those comments may not all be there at the very end, you've still got a good idea of what you've done and how you've how you've built the what you've built. So it does help speed up the development process. And of course means more efficient collaboration. So comments help you, yourself, but they also help other people in your team. And they could help someone new to your team. And even some nosy person outside of your team wondering how you did something. So this is something I came across at least 10 years ago when I was wondering how somebody did something on their website and as we all do, uh, I viewed the source of that page to figure out what this person had done and not really knowing how comments worked, of course, I was a little bit frightened. But I realized that whoever wrote this code was clearly as protective of their code as I was of mine. But we're not in a world where we do that anymore. We're in a world where we all work on the same project, we collaborate and people put their personal projects up on GitHub for people to contribute to. And sometimes they even just put their ideas up there for somebody to start working on. So how can we make our comments better? So a couple of things not to do. Don't comment everything. Not everything needs to be given comments. And don't be too verbose. We only need a few words to describe some rule sets or maybe a short sentence. And don't spend time writing comments. I've seen people write semi-private monologues about how they hate their co-workers and how many hours, hours they've wasted on this particular file. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to revisit uh, the buttons file I was talking about earlier. Just a few small changes can make this a lot more understandable for someone else looking at this. So I've put buttons at the top of the file because there is a possibility that we might rename this file to something else. So a simple title can do the, do the job. And a sentence just explaining where you might find what's in this file, uh, just a brief overview. And then of course I've put the obvious names of the buttons and their colors, blue, red, green, yellow. So now anyone knows which uh, code is relevant to the red button. I've got a couple of other examples. So with this one, we can't, we can't name CSS afters. 
So it might not be immediately obvious what this is. And I've also hidden the content, so I don't really give away what's, what this is. Um, and even though the class name is pretty semantic, we might have a good idea of what it's about. Just a small comment can really explain what this is. So now we know um, that this is a post author label for a comment. Here's another example. Um, obviously, with a preprocessor, it's nested. But what does this do? So a few words, active state for segment controls panel. And we, we have a good idea of what that is and it gives us some context. Another one here is, okay, why would you use important? What's this for? Just overriding some Angular stuff so that we can animate something. Awesome. And here's another one. So why would somebody comment this out and not just remove it entirely? So it's just something that we can't use just yet. And of course, when you've done that and you've built a new, a built a new feature and you want to show that to your coworkers or all the people on your team, write a commit message. But a lot of people just write WIP. So what does that mean? How am I supposed to understand this? Work in progress, tried to fix some weird box, made the triangle thing work, refactor. What did you refactor? Hotfix navigation and our um, new favorite, oops. Um, this is how I like to write my commit messages with a verb, present tense, and given a bit more description as to what I'm doing. So yeah, fixing box sizing issue, we know what we're fixing. Implementing triangle for notification bubble, could have been a triangle for anything, right? And refactoring, now we know exactly what we're refactoring. So if somebody asks you, hey, have you done that thing for the list item and made it like mobile friendly, then you can go through your commit history and you know exactly what you're doing. Um, I mean, you know exactly what, uh, where you've done it. Uh, some people have adopted this method as well, which is also, I have to admit, a bit clearer. And then when you've done that, make a pull request. But people don't really put detail in their pull requests. Just you want to merge X into Y, but what, what do you want to merge? And I would assume and hope that you do code reviews, because if you don't, then I'd be pretty concerned. But you want to know what's changed. If someone's code reviewing, they want to know what has what has changed and what did it look like before and what's it supposed to look like now. And they want to be able to understand what you've changed. So what fixed bu bug with button? Like what was this what was this bug? <laughs> Which button? Where? And yeah, here's an example of how we can make that better. Can um put the ticket number, uh what exactly we fixed on the button, and I've even like specified which um browsers they had problems in. And um in the description I've written I added pointer events none to prevent this behavior. So exactly what I added. So going back to my analogy, um, going to a new country you've never, uh, never been to. Comments aren't supposed to be things that just stand in our face and um, are in our way. They're meant to guide us like road signs. They're meant to tell us where to go. So they don't have to be super descriptive. If we write better comments, then we don't have to RTFM. So even better, WBFC, write better effing comments, please, and thank you.